the late, great James Baldwin. Thank you for your truth. changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. James Baldwin.
A lot of people don't know the story hidden beneath your glory, and that's cool. We are proud people, and rightfully so, because I can guarantee that everyone in this room is not displaying a visual representation of what he or she has been or is currently going through. See, we as a people have learned the not-so-subtle art of making things look good when they simply are not good. We are the descendants of the people that made a way out of no way, produced a will to live when there was no way, and created our own little slice of heaven when there was no means to get away. And what's crazy is I don't know any other way to be. See, when given the chance to look behind the curtain compared to what you see this evening, it's like night and day. But I hope that I'm making it look good at least anyway. And y'all know that our bounce back game be something fierce and it's not to be played with. Stories of those that have overcome and some that have fallen along the way. It's not a myth nor story, but the blueprint to our lives. We carry around her story and his story as if it's his story, but is it? Nah, see, it's my story, it's our story. And we owe a debt to the OGs of resilience, wanting more for them than to be reduced to the white okay pages of a tightly bound set of whitewashed words. They taught us to get up, to stand strong, and this is why I love my people. Whether we are making others laugh through the pain or learning to remove generational curses of doubt and shame or simply standing in the rain with our hands to the heavens calling its name, we endure. We endure like our lives depend on it because it does. The luxury of giving up has never been afforded to us. And don't you dare let anyone tell you that you are too anything because you're not two anything, nor three, and for your information, we are who we are because of what we've been through and what we've had to endure. With stress being the first cousin to the struggle and the play cousin to pain, I'm trying to rearrange my mental not to appear vain, but I'm always gonna maintain this smile because hell, I've been through the rain. And I say all of this to say this, don't get lost in the word history, because history is your story. History was their story. History is our story. Thank you. Oh, my God. 
March 19, 1906, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Alleged assault. That victim refused to swear as if our beliefs are concrete, if your skin shares the pale resemblance. They gave Ed Johnson hope by allowing it to go to the Supreme Court. But his patience wore thin like slave clothes. Our early examples of vigilantes would up the ante just to lay fire to your skin like cupping techniques. He sat in jail knowing he never stood a chance. The mob grew, furious of his existence, so without conclusion they broke into that jail. It took three hours, which in that moment was the exact amount of time it took to realize you were being served to death on a silver platter. Officials had every chance to save you, but they basically opened the door that was an entrance to the grave you would be in soon. When you cross a bridge, staring at the beautiful beams, do you ever feel the juice dripping from the strange fruit that hung from them? It's a spectacle for the whole town. Can you believe he forgave the people who would soon take his life? God bless you all. I am an innocent man. But it wasn't enough. So nobody cares. In fact, they became impatient that he was taking too long to suffocate. 50 rounds will do the trick except one cut the rope. He was still moving. Then the brave sheriff stopped everything, walked over to his body, and fired five more shots in his head. They hung bodies from that bridge for people to see and to learn that it doesn't matter how far you've come, you still run the risk of being one and done. It took nearly 100 years for him to receive justice. He was 24 years old. At 24 years old, I was kissing my two-year-old daughter on her head as she went to sleep. Ed didn't get that opportunity. In fact, Justice can't be served after death. The dead don't benefit. Nine of the men involved were convicted and combined they only served a little over a year in jail. One became a hero after his release. Yeah, I'd love to keep this shit in the past too. But how can we, when these horrors are part of our history, in which we are not far removed. Appreciated person in America is a black woman. Our history shows and proves by the way they're ignored and abused, only put in front of cameras to amuse. What's their use anyway? How vital is the black woman? Well, probably as vital as the black child. It's a fact if that child makes it into this world. The life they have to deal with after that may be cut short for whatever reason satisfies the pecking order we crossed into these borders from across waters to be the foundation this great nation stands on. The black woman deals with the lack of acceptance but expected to display amounts of strength to deal with the bulls. If you listen closely, you can hear them cry, and there's a million reasons why. That's no exaggeration. Proud Mary wasn't Mary Magdalene, and Mary Magdalene wasn't Mary Turner. Well, let me guess. Nobody knows who Mary Turner is. 
but you will hear her screams and her tears and her cries in this poem. Oh, Mary, won't you weep? Mary, won't you mourn? Mary, won't you mourn? Black women are often put into the position to defend whomever it is, whether it's her kids or black men, and unfortunately, sometimes that can be their downfall. So when Mary Turner's husband was lynched for speaking out against an abuser, a white man who got blacks out of a bad situation by bailing them out of prison to give them a lawless incarceration, beating them and restarting enslavement, there's no proof, but they blamed him. Mary wept, and Mary mourned and screamed to the top of her lungs that justice would come. But a woman speaking in the first place is where she went wrong. Why do I say this? Because for so long and even now, it's true. Not much to discuss, but that same mob had the perfect plan to set an example and shut Mary up. Oh, Mary, won't you weep? Mary, won't you mourn? Mary, won't you mourn? They took Mary to a spot near bread, strung her up by her feet, soaked her body in gasoline, and set fire to another one of our queens. And as if that wasn't ample, they wanted to make a thorough example, so they took a knife and cut open her eight-month pregnant belly open. And when the baby fell out, screaming for its mother like so many of us do moments before they kill us, a member of that mob crushed the baby's head with his foot. Then they put hundreds of bullets through Mary's body as if she would come back a zombie, and it's alarming because there were no charging, so Mary's only justice, hopefully, lies somewhere in the future where maybe somebody will take enough interest to bring them to justice in the future. Because it's not a mystery. But people have always chosen to stay silent against mistreatment and violence. It should ring sirens, but not of ambulances. They can't even give birth peacefully for fear of an unnecessary hysterectomy or death because inadequate health care and we're left to mourn Mary. And that's the most acknowledgement a black woman will get is through her death. So cry, Mary, for your husband. And every other black male brought to death, cry, Mary. For other black women who are constantly injected with the pressures of the world and they die in vain, and for the little Marys whose black girl magic couldn't stop them from passing every black boy joy that was wrongfully accused, wrongfully murdered, wrongfully brought to this country. No justice in life, no justice in death. Mary. I'm sorry, but you'll have to keep crying because this country is not done with you yet. Oh, Mary, won't you be? Mary, won't you mourn? Mary.